So one thing I wanted to point out about the print files is you might look at the size of this and think, that is a really low resolution. This is one of the major differences between this technique and other techniques that we have here at Printful. You want this to be 558 pixels by 721 pixels specifically for this extra large size with 96 DPI. That is very different than the 300 DPI for the non-apparel, like mm -hmm. mugs and posters and that kind of thing, and the 150 DPI. And the reason why we have this is because of what we were talking about earlier. Each one of these dots here is a pixel. So like if you were to count each one of these loops all the way up. Hold on. So each one of these, I would say maybe this is like about like 10, 10, 10, mm -hmm. 10. So this is like 50. And then you go down another and that's like 100. This much is 100. You go down more. That's another 100. Go down more. That's another 100. That's already 300, 400, and like maybe mm -hmm. 450. This is size extra large. So I would assume that if I went into a size extra large, the length for this specific print file would be about like 450. Yeah, well, and that's eyeballing it. I mean, yeah. because 3XL is 721. Like if you are thinking about like how many stitches you're actually putting on the shirt, I think it's actually kind of a pretty high um, resolution, but it doesn't come anywhere close to the high resolution, like the 300 DPI that we can print on t-shirts. Mm -hmm. So if that's something that is really important to you, image fidelity is important to you, this is maybe not the technique that you might be looking for. But if you're looking for a stylized, um, cool um, sweater uh, at a like lower resolution, this would be something um, for you. Mm -hmm. All right, so we downloaded the image from Unsplash. So let's open that in Photoshop. All right, so I what I want to do is I want to select this forest and kind of cut it out from the background so that we can do different things with it on the um, design maker. I've kind of talked about the idea of like, you sort of want to know where you're going mm -hmm. when you are working in Photoshop. Like this file, like let's look at how big it is that we downloaded. It's 4,000 by um, 2,667 pixels, which is way bigger than we need it to be. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna go ahead and shrink it down to 558 pixels just to start. 558, and then that is going to be way smaller. Oh yeah. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to, and there's a lot of ways to select different things in Photoshop, but when you're selecting something like these trees here, they're mm -hmm. all one color range. So I like to use the select color range tool when you do select color range, you can click on the target area. Um, the fuzziness kind of allows you to like select how close the pixels will have to be mm -hmm. to be selected. If you wanted, you could hold shift and then drag across to get more. I don't wanna do that, so I just want one value. Fuzziness, I want it high enough to get all the trees, but not so high that it grabs the sky. Mm -hmm. So something like this. All right, so now we've selected the trees. And the way I like to remove things from the background is by using a layer mask. Um, so let's click this button here mm -hmm. to make a layer mask. And basically that adds a black and white image where anything black is not shown, but anything white is shown. Mm -hmm. And so that is removing everything out of this image that is not masked. Mm -hmm. I also like to, like, if I'm working only in one color, something I like to do is I like to just go in and um, select the one color. And I like to just select the whole thing, fill um, foreground color. And like, you didn't notice anything changing, but basically what that did was it made the entire layer black, mm -hmm. but then you get the layer mask showing like, only the parts where there are trees. So we have the shape, mm -hmm. uh, but we don't have any color differentiation within the shape. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And also I like to go in here and sort of- uh, Make sure we don't have any stray pixels. Well, like we yeah, exactly. About. I like to boost up that contrast because the contrast makes it so that there are semi-transparent pixels. And uh, when you increase the contrast, it gets rid of all those semi-transparent pixels. 
Uh, is there any way that we could see whether or not there are any stray pixels? That's a good question. I mean, I'm not seeing any here. There are ways to check, um, but at the moment I'm not seeing any. You can zoom in and, and try to notice if there are any. It looks pretty clean. Yeah, it looks clean to me too. But this is at the very least like a, you know, something that you should do. Zoom in, take a look, because if there is randomly one stray pixel that you didn't notice that was black up, up top and you put it into the design maker and you started designing you decided to change the color of your forest from black to red suddenly you have a red dot at the very top of your sweater that you didn't want to be there mm -hmm. and it is if you don't notice it is going to be knitted into the sweater exactly or the t-shirt or the vest whatever you're creating i can't wait to see those all over print beanies to be honest like when, like knitted beanies, yeah, yeah. Or sorry, yes, yeah. that is exactly what I mean. All right, so basically all I wanted was um, like a tree, uh, treetop asset, basically. This looks quite like a hipster tattoo, uh, uh, if, you, yeah. if you know what I'm talking about, but in a good way. Yeah, and then of course, whenever we're designing using one of our print file templates, when you go to export, you want to turn off the instructions because you don't want the instructions in the print file template exported. Always good to remember, I have done that in the past several times where I put it into DesignMaker and I'm like, oh no, oh, I have to re-export that again. Mm -hmm. So this is sort of the hybrid version. Um, and I'm gonna quick export this as PNG. I'm gonna save it to my Printful Knitwear um, folder. And then let's switch on over to here. Um, and upload it. Well, what are you gonna do in addition to these trees? Well, what I want, I wanna do two things. My plan is to um, get these treetops in here, mm -hmm. right? And then what I was kind of thinking was, um, I want to use the, the base color to get a sky color. Mm. So we have a nice, Royal blue, Yale blue is what it's been called here. I like this sand trim, I think. I think that that's pretty cool. And um, I mean, this is cool by itself, um, but hold on, let me duplicate this to the back print. Mm -hmm. I'm also gonna go to the back and I'm going to transform this and flip it horizontally. Like Oh, it's like a mirror image. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is a great tip. Yeah. Because I did start thinking about, oh, how could we make this wrap around? Maybe it would mm -hmm. be so hard. Not at all. Not at all. And what do you think about having treetops on the sleeves? No. No? No, okay. I think especially like if this ends, like uh, if the treetops end a little bit below the armpit seams, uh, I think this is going to be like a great little treetops hugging you and then your arms are free. Yeah, so I like this design, but I wanted to use some assets from the design maker to kind of- Fancy it up. Yeah, um, I think that there was some solar activity going on right now that's causing aurora. Wow. Um, and so basically I wanted to do something that mimicked the aurora. So mm -hmm. um, I already did this earlier, so I know the text that I'm searching for. I've got these groovy lines. Quite uh, literally. Yeah. yeah. I like this one. Let's do this one. And let's size it up to cover the sky. And let's change the color to pink. And we gotta put it under the layer of the trees. And there we go. We got kind of like the aurora. Mm, that is so cool. So in this kind of design, would you go for solid or pixelated mode? As far as I know, mm -hmm. um, the clip art is a vector image mm -hmm. with really crisp lines. Let's click pixelated and see what happens. And nothing really changed. The one thing that is making me want to do pixelated is probably the detail in the trees, yeah. I guess. Since we didn't have any semi-transparent pixels, I don't think it's going to really change a whole lot. But still, yeah, like if in general, the rule of thumb is if you have a bunch of detail or if you have a gradient uh, or if you have some semi-transparent pixels or uh, if you have a photo uh, that has a bunch of different like details that you wanna come through, pixelated mode mm -hmm. is the way to go. Um, yeah. So what I was doing here was I was going through and um, duplicating this to all the print uh, placement areas. Mm -hmm. So front, back, right, left. But let's take a look at what we've got for this sweater. 
Oh, that's so pretty. Wait, I love the, I didn't think I was gonna like it as much, but the trim color contrasting so hard with the rest of it actually makes this super groovy. I don't know, in matters of taste, right? Like there's no right or wrong, but I personally really love it. As with a lot of things at Printful, just get in there and start playing around in the design maker and uh, see what you can come up with, but always read the guidelines and know the limitations. And this is also a very helpful way to explore different tools, I think. Uh, I have never used Photoshop, but I would be willing to try if I'm able to get that that forest in there <laughs> the way we did it. So uh, good luck um, and uh, come back for another uh, design focused live stream probably in like a month or two. And in the meantime, bye bye and happy selling.